Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos. North, South as well as East, West, West. So, the news is related to the decline of multilateralism which took place after post after Cold War, uh, that is after 1990s. See, post Cold War multilateralism has passed its peak moments. After 1990s, after the end of the Cold War, many countries raised to a situation that then there, there should not be any kind of unilateral aspect of unilateral decision making. There need to be multilateralism that should be prevailing so that every country, most importantly, the countries in Asian region or the Southeast Asian region formed a group called as ASEAN. And then similarly, the European countries integrated themselves into the European Union. So that they could be able to act as one of the important player in the global arena because of their collective strength. And then similarly, India also, not only uh, during that period, India stopped depending on certain handful of country. It also began to diversify its relationship with other countries. So that India's relationship with China began during that period and India started to look at the eastern side of the continents. Eastern side means look east, uh, Southeast Asian as, as well as East Asian region. And then uh, US integration with the China has also took place. Similarly, every country began to interact with each other as a result of which a cooperative multilateral uh, type of politics in global arena was developing during the uh, later stage of 1990s. See, that is why the Russia was drawn into G7 countries as a result of which it began to convert it into G8 countries and then China became close with US as well as ASEAN countries. So, the, the, uh, the there, there was a heavy cooperation between each and every countries so that the uh, global economy flourished. But this kind of multilateral decision making got ended or, or its base got shaken during the 2014. Russian annexation of Crimea and then which in turn led to the, uh, the Russian Ukraine war which is happening right now and then the unilateral decision taken by the China to, uh, to extend their border beyond the other country sovereign borders also acted as one of the shed, what, uh, one of the moment which uh, reduced the multilateralism that was prevailing post Cold War. So, this was it. So, in order to overcome these kind of unilateral decisions like Russia annexing Crimea and then uh, fighting with other uh, going war with Ukraine and then uh, China creating trouble with the border countries, the regional groupings like Quad. AUKUS and trilateral compact that is uh, trilateral compact that is a three country South Korea, Japan and US formed the regional security uh, partnership to overcome the uh, unilateral decision or the unilateral uh, security related threat being created by the China in this region. So, this is what the uh, fall down, this is what the reason for fall down of multilateralism and then the multilateralism is now taking a another shape which how it is taking is we will look in we will look in when uh, in the upcoming slides see what the india's multilateral stand india supports right uh, till now india is also supporting the multilateral multilateralism only how it is supporting is that pm our prime minister is going to attend the uh, asean meeting which is being it is going to be held in jakarta in indonesia where he will be saying that Quad in the Indo-Pacific region enables the or, the or contributes to the efforts of the ASEAN. So, the Quad is not in a position to overtake the functioning of ASEAN. The ASEAN, the, the development of the Southeast Asian region will be centered around ASEAN only. So, if the Quad is going to come in the Indo-Pacific region means there will be tussle between both the 
groupings. But India is very, it, India is sure that the, Asi, the Southeast Asian region will be developed with, with the ASEAN grouping as the, with its core. But in the, uh, but in the case of the role of Quad, its uh, working will be only in the complementary nature of, uh, only in the complementary nature of ASEAN. And then re-globalization. What our Ministry of uh, External Affairs has said that right now the world is going to get re-globalized. Why? What is re-globalized is the globalization where every countries will be uh, the decision making will be democratized and then uh, the countries will not be uh, uh, the, the globalization will not be based on the consumption rather than production. The production will also not be concentrated only on certain countries like Beijing. So, it, the supply chain will be splitted so that the, the resilience of the supply chain will be safeguarded. This kind of re-globalization will be created. So, multiple production line is going to be created means then multiple countries will come to the forum of the uh, in the world arena. And then third is stressing the collective effort. Right now, India is stressing the collective effort in decision making which we will, we can we could able to see in the g20 itself in g20 uh, india is making a huge effort to arrive at a, arrive at the collective decision in many uh, problems which is facing which is threatening the global arena and then like in the case of inflation digital transformation food security etc and then fourth is putting global south in the g20 right now india is leading or acting as the voice for the global south the, uh, in the G20 forum, so that India is trying to integrate those G20 or the global sorry those global South country with the North country. North country means the developed countries. So that India is acting as a bridge between the developing as well as developed country by taking the lead of the global South in G20 as well as in every other forum. So these are all the in you know, stand been taken by India to promote the multilateralism in a different angle now, which is very democratic where and where the supply chain will be very resilient, where the decision will decision will be made based on consensus and then where the each and every uh, nations will be integrated into the decision making rather than the decision being taken by the certain handful of countries like western or the developed countries. And how the news is related to exam, civil service examination is under prelims, it is related to current events of national and international importance. And then it is related to, under mains, it is related to effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries on India's interests and India diaspora. These are all under this topic only the uh, news is related to. Okay, let us discuss about the previous year prelims question which was asked in relation to the news which we have seen right now on the board. India is a member of which one of the following countries? Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. No, India is not a member of it. Then Association of Southeast Asian Nation, ASEAN. It is also not. In, only the members of Southeast Asian are the members of ASEAN grouping. And then Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. They are also India is not a member. And then East Asian Summit, yes, in this, which is the initiative of ASEAN, in this, uh, uh, India is the member of it. So, answer is option B3 only. So, let us discuss about ASEAN. It is the political as well as economic organization, which established, which was established in 1967 by five countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand. And a Bangkok Declaration. And then currently it has 10 members where the members were joined in the later period of times. And then its secretariat is located in Jakarta that is in Indonesia. Okay, let us discuss about other 
ஏ ஆசியான் குரூப்பிங்ஸ் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் லைக் ஈஸ்ட் ஏசியன் சமிட் இட் வாஸ் எஸ்டாப்ளிஷ்ட் இன் டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஆஸ் அன் ஆசியான் லெட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் இட் ஹேஸ் டோட்டல் எயிட்டீன் மெம்பர்ஸ் அபார்ட் ஃப்ரம் தட் டென் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆசியான் கண்ட்ரீஸ் த அதர் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஆர் இந்தியா சைனா ஜப்பான் யூஎஸ் ஆஸ்திரேலியா நியூசிலாந்து as well as south korea and only leaders and it is the only leaders led forum where all key partners meet to discuss the political security as well as economic challenges facing the indo pacific region and then us as well as russia are also the members of the east asian summit so totally 18 members and then what is the relation between india as well as asean in this uh, the 43rd asean summit is going to be conducted the asean summit is the highest decision making body of the asean platform where the decision will be taken by the uh, heads of the government and it will set the tone or the policy for the asean groupings and then india asean relation in it is a multi level Uh, india is engaging with asean in multi level meetings like east asian summit as well as asean regional forum and asean defense minister meetings in which india is engaging with asean countries and then in delhi dialogue which aimed to promote track 1.5 diplomacy been held between india as well as asean countries what is track 1.5 diplomacy is the uh, it is it is the engagement of officials as well as non official members of the countries so that the uh, the engagement will be taking place between the india as well as asean member countries from both the officials as well as the non official members those who are present in the those countries and then indo pacific that as i have said uh, the china is unilaterally behaving like uh, be- behaving uh, uh, like uh, extending its border towards the sovereign uh, nation towards the other sovereign nation without any without any kind of consensus based decision so this kind of act be- has created a security threat in the indo pacific maritime areas so that india is engaging with asean countries to push back the china in this indo pacific uh, indian ocean pacific initiative is one of the initiative where the india as well as asean countries is engaging to safeguard the maritime region of the indo pacific region so that it will be open as well as transparent it will inclusive and the maritime will be under the uh, rules and regulation of international laws and then india is following a policy of act is policy from the 2014 see as i said after 1990s uh, india wanted to diversify its engagement across the world so it formed a policy called look east policy and then after 2014 it converted that look east policy into act east policy where they needed india decided to actively engage with the southeast asian countries to promote the political economic as well as other engagement with the asean countries so what we need to be study further is we should know about what does the sagar initiative of india is about and then we should also know about what is the neighborhood first policy of in india and then third is we should know about the south china sea the map as well as the the border countries of the south china sea is about and what is the issue of the south china sea and is uh, taking place there we should also know about it